Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Ferndale City Council meeting uh, for Monday, January 22nd, 2018. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, Marnie, would you call the roll, please? Council members Leakes May? Here. Councilmember Martin? Here. Mayor for Campolica? Here. Councilmember Piana? Here. And Mayor Coulter? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum this evening. Uh, next item of business would be the approval of the agenda. Through the chair, I'd like to add a presentation. The uh, county commissioner, Helene Zach, is here. All right. We'll add county commissioner to the presentation. And also through the chair, I'd like to add the DDA, DDA presentation. Ah, all right. Any all right. other changes? I move to approve the agenda with the uh, amendments uh, presented. Support. Wow. Uh, moved by Piana, supported by Pollaka. <laughs> Any discussion on the agenda? Marnie, would you call the roll? Council members, please May? Yes. Martin? Yes. Pollaka? Yes. Piana? Yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. The agenda is adopted. Uh, moving on now to presentations. And our first one is the Beautification Commission and their annual Holiday Lights Award. And the town looked especially beautiful this year. And uh, here to reward folks for the beauty. <laughs> oh, yes. Greetings, Council. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, we, uh, we realize this is after the holidays. But our voting all occurred uh, just before Christmas, and so everyone who won an award received a sign in their yard prior to the holiday. So it's not like we're just after the fact, other than the fact that uh, they didn't get their certificates this, this time. Uh, we will be getting those to them. Uh, my usual able-bodied assistant, it appears, has come down with the flu, and so she didn't get those certificates printed today. But we have the awards here to show you. First of all, though, before we get into the awards, we're going to have a little pr uh, shameless uh, push here. It's 2018, and we are looking for some new commissioners. Technically, our commissioners do a three-year term. And so we've got a couple, myself included, who are up for renewal or stepping off. Uh, however, we've all agreed to hold the positions that we are in and still looking for some new folks to give us a little more energy. Uh, you can pick up an app at the City Hall and go through the process. We meet every third Thursday for an hour here at the library. Also, if you would, I don't know if you've noticed in the news, but some changes to Facebook are occurring. Uh, if you like our page, in order to see our, our notices and posts better, you have to follow the page, not just like it. So please spread the word, because we would like to have you following us. Yep. <laughs> cool. The first winner in the Holiday Lights Awards was 659 Withington. It's in our northwest quadrant, and we were just really... Uh, happy with the very traditional red and white color scheme there. And I will have to say that we've had a couple of folks comment on our page about how they thought their house was much prettier than some of the ones that won awards. <laughs> and we simply oh. responded, were you nominated? <laughs> so the key to winning is first nominations. The Southeast winner was 315 Ardmore. Again, very playful, eclectic use of lights and all sorts of little goodies in the yard there, and we thought it was quite fun and festive. Did I go back? No, that's the next one. Uh, West Hazelhurst, 1025. Now, a couple of the houses, I couldn't find owners on the tax records, so we... <laughs> um, couldn't come up with a name, but this one was Sean Evans. So if you know Sean, let them know that they did a lovely job with this house. Uh, our fourth house, 3145 Horton, Northeast. We just had to give it hands down because of the excessive, though delightful, use <laughs> of many and numerous blow molds. Uh, we have one person on our commission who has this affinity for blow molds, and she was quite blown away by it. So we, we gave them the award. 
for the commercial winner. Prism really brought it to the table. Uh, in fact, uh, we thought they might be kin to that guy from all those uh, National Lampoon uh, holiday movies, the Griswolds. Uh, they were still putting up lights uh, as we were driving up. Uh, and they really, really did a great job. So if you see Jim O'Leary, uh, ask him if he knows Clark. And finally, this one we just had to, to recognize over at 715 East Breckenridge. It wasn't a house, but we just had to name it a, an unofficial award called Ho, 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 Gotta Go. <laughs> a lovely uh, Porty John. Yes. Folks, we appreciate your support. It's going to be an awesome year this year. We are looking to doing some partnering with several of the organizations here in the Ferndale area. And as always, keep Ferndale beautiful. Excellent. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you. <laughs> Very fun. Ho, 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 gotta go. <laughs> All right. Always creative. Our next presentation is the Ferndale Area District Library Quarterly Report. Jenny, you're going to have a hard time topping that, I think. Well, and to make it even worse, my neighbor is one of the ones that uh, won up there, and I would had nothing up this year because I haven't found that box yet from unpacking. So I felt, <laughs> now I feel twice as bad. <laughs> I didn't, didn't pull my weight on the street. <laughs> Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Um, just so you know, uh, my PowerPoint will be on our library website where we put all the agendas and minutes, so if anyone wants to look at it later instead of frantically trying to take notes. Um, I'm going to um, probably go kind of fast just because there's a lot on the agenda, so slow me down and back me up if you need me to go over right. anything else. So basically, we're just kind of going over some of our numbers for the last quarter, which was October, November, and December. Um, here's our revenue stream. We've gotten a majority of our property taxes in already this year. So, um, you know, you can see we've gotten almost all of our year-to-date revenue in that we're expecting. So now we're just kind of, you know, for the last part of the year. A um, couple of miscellaneous things that we only get once a year, like our E-rate refund. And that's actually two years' worth because we didn't get it um, asked for it last year. So, um, and then um, the other tax revenue from the um, uh, local community stabilization authority. So those are just kind of once a year things. On the expenditure side, uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to see. Um, we're doing okay. We have a couple of things that um, we, like our uh, the payment on our bond, the, the interest we pay twice a year. So that always jumps up that month when that's in there. And, um, and then we did a little bit of capital outlay um, too, but everything else is kind of, you know, on the, on the, on the train as we're going through, so come along pretty well. Um, library usage, here are staffs comparing to last year. Um, we did notice a dip in foot traffic um, during when the, since the weather's been so cold, um, so we, it is noticeable when, when it's not good, people aren't coming in. Um, our overall circulation, though, is not down. Part of that is because when people come in, they stock up for weeks yeah. <laughs> with stuff, so they've got right. everything they need. And then we also um, have statistics for our digital um, downloadables from Overdrive and Hoopla, and that goes into that too. So, you know, it's a nice thing when you don't want to go out, but you need a book to read just to be able to download it on your tablet and be ready to go. So yeah. that it goes into that. Um, we're noticing we're getting less use on our website because more and more people are getting event information on Facebook and our other social media. And I don't have a way of getting those stats yet to be able to kind of see the shift, but more and more people are going more to social media to get that quick information that they need. Um, we had a program recently, and we did a quick little three-question survey after it, and almost every single survey said they heard about the program on Facebook mm -hmm. or from a friend who tagged them from their Facebook. So, um, so we're just kind of seeing more of a shift in how people are getting their information. Um, programming, we keep getting, our, our kids' programs are always packed, and the more we do, the more people come in. For adult programming, we're doing kind of less of them, but putting more quality into them. So um, I, I think we're seeing kind of the, uh, the paradox of choice where, you know, people, you know, want fewer things that they can go to. There's just always so much going on in Ferndale, so we're trying to pick and choose when we do things for adults. But kids' programs, we, the more we add, the more people come because they're very, very popular. 
Um, circulation, there's kind of a mix of what people are checking out from the library. As you can see, print is still the most popular. Um, I always expect that DVDs to be bigger because I see so many going in and out, but they circulate for shorter periods of time. <laughs> so that's why we see so much of them as they go through. Um, I also think that affects our overall circulation when the weather's bad because all the new DVDs we have only circulate for two days and then they're due. And people, if they can't trust they can get back out again, just aren't checking that kind of stuff out. So. Um, as you can see, still um, the adult, by, if you can go by age group, adult is much higher, but that's also where most of the DVDs fall into, is for that. But still, we're a lot of usage, people coming in for services and for materials, so you know, we're, we're always busy. I just thought I'd highlight a few programs coming up. Um, we are still doing our First Stop Friday uh, series. This is our free music concerts on the first Friday of the month. Um, we have it at 8 p.m., so it's kind of like after dinner, but before you get your final destination downtown somewhere. So we have an eclectic mix of musical acts that we bring in from you know around. So just kind of a, an easy little thing. Only It's usually like 30, 40 minutes. So... Um, we're partnering with the Chamber and the DDA for, um, to host um, a program called Learn the Four Key Pieces to a Great Business. That's going to be February 13th at the library, so we're excited to have that coming in. Uh, we're going to be hosting um, an early learning fair, and basically we're bringing in all the different preschools from the local area in so they can have a table, and they're going to have activities, and it's just really informational for parents who are starting to look ahead to preschool. So there's different types of preschool philosophies out there, and we're going to have them all in one room so people can talk to them. Um, Honey is um, Space for Moms is going to be um, registering people so that they can do um, child seat inspections with them. So there will just be like one spot for tons of information if you're you know, a parent with young children and you're trying to look ahead a little. Um, we're doing Battle of the Books. Um, that's coming up. The final battle's in March. It's going to be at the Ferndale Upper Elementary School Cafeteria on March 28th. And um, I put that on there so you can see the, different, the six books in the battle. And basically it's team quiz show. <laughs> Um, where the kids um, form teams. We have 21 teams right now. That's over 80 kids participating from the fifth grade. And they each, you know, they, the team, they all read the books, and then there's questions, and, you know, kind of goes from there. It should be a lot of fun. The kids are really excited, and we've been going over there to change with the books so that the kids can check them out right in their classroom and move on to the next. So I believe someone's maybe having their kid might be. I do. Yes, <laughs> I do, and he's on it too, so thank you. <laughs> yes. And um, finally, we are doing this series all year long. Um, it's um, Adulting 101, and we're doing it every other month. And we had our first one in January. It was uh, bullet journaling and um, hand lettering. It was packed, uh, but they had a great time. And we've um, started trying to live stream some of our programs. We got a new web camera for it. Um, I was in charge of it the first time. I am not Spielberg, but it, it got it done. But we're, we're working on our production <laughs> value a little bit on these. But... Um, it's, it's a series going all year. It's free. We just have people register because we have limited space. But it's just a lot of fun stuff for people. You know, there's you know etiquette for you know new mayors, housekeeping, you know how to you know plan for money milestones, and so it's just going to be a lot of fun. I think all year. So that's it for me. Questions? Any questions for Jen? Through the chair, I, I was just wondering, how are those Sunday hours working out? Are you seeing? We're seeing a lot of families coming in. The children's area is pretty packed. Um, it's just, um, we've had a lot of people come in and they swap stuff out, especially if they checked out new DVDs on Friday. By Sunday, they're due, so they come in and, and can get more. But we're seeing a lot of families coming in, and we just keep hearing, thank you for being open, so we have a place to go. <laughs> and so we're, it's been really positive. We're, we're, we're excited to offer that. Um, one thing I would mention is, um, by virtue of being mayor, I'm also I have a seat on the DDA, and I just want to publicly acknowledge uh, your board because uh, recently, due to changes in state law, uh, your board had the opportunity to uh, actually increase its revenue by not sharing a portion of the of the TIF capture that the, the library would normally uh, capture that would normally go to the DDA that had previously gone to the DDA. And um, I know after a lot of discussion uh, and consultation between the DDA and the library, your board voted uh, to allow the, the DDA to continue to capture that, which helps keep their budget um, stable. And you didn't have to do that, but I think it's a great example of the way that uh, communities, I mean, organizations in our 
community are working together and understand the mission and value of other organizations. So I just want to personally express to your board uh, that our thanks for doing that. Thank you. We see it as win-win. You know, we, um, we are part of the downtown, and everything that we can do together will save us all money in the end. So being able to cost share and partner on projects and apply for grants is really, in the end, it, it saves us money. So we're really excited to, you know, be able to move forward in, you know, working with everybody downtown, and we we're happy to do it. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jenny. Yep. Good to see you. Uh, our next presentation is the Ferndale Housing Commission, and uh, Heather's here to present a 2018 strategic plan update. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be with you tonight. Great. Well, I'd like to um, look back over 2017 and share some of our achievements and also let you know how we're looking forward to this new year and what we hope to accomplish in 2018. So I'll just um, start with saying that, that home is a springboard. And one of the foundational pieces that we use in approaching our work at the Ferndale Housing Commission is really to go beyond, beyond housing, the word that's in our name, and really look at housing as, as a home and how important that is um, to really set the table and the foundation for people within our community to have um, good health, good access to opportunity, strong families, um, and strong community. So we really try to go beyond ho housing and look at home as a springboard for success. Um, I'd also like to point out that we really view inclusive housing as something that is um, critical to all of us. It affects the entire community, especially as people age and want to stay within their community and look for options, for example, other than a single-family home. Um, and we have some of those options available through the Ferndale Housing Commission. Um, we look at the work we do as really supportive of that concept of aging in place and making sure that people have access to the things that they love, like the library, like transportation, like shopping at their local stores and the DDA. Um, so so we're, we're really proud about the programs that we have and, and excited about the improvements we've made to them. Um, just for the benefit of the community, I think I would like to just um, give an overview of the two programs that we do administer through the Ferndale Housing Commission. One is our public housing program, and those are the actual properties that we own here in the community and manage as landlords. They're the um, two high-rise buildings, um, Autumn House at 500 East Nine Mile and Withington West at 415 Withington. We also have single-family homes scattered throughout the community um, where larger families stay. Um, so that's our public housing piece of the puzzle. And then we also administer um, housing choice vouchers, which are um, rental assistance for families that um, rent in the private marketplace but need a little help making up the difference between what they can afford and what the private marketplace requires that they pay in rent. So those are the two programs that we administer. And um, Housing Choice Voucher, they're able to use that rent subsidy in Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County. So that's a little bit um, broader of a program. We uh, met this fall as a board to um, review our strategic plan and look forward um, to how we want to update and take that forward. Um, I'll point out, it, I've reordered the pictures a little bit from last year because we just had our annual meeting um, at our January meeting and we elected officers. Um, we have a new president, Jennifer Bentley is the president of the board at this point and Reggie Sutherland is the vice president now. Um, and Reggie is the first, I'm told by Anne, so I believe her, um, that he is the first resident member of the commission to hold an office, nice. an officer position. So um, Reggie's the, the new vice president there. Um, and we have Ann Heller, and we have Deanna Tartaglia, and we do have a vacancy that I believe might be filled next month. Mm -hmm. You know, stay tuned. Um, one thing I will point out, though, coming up in May, we anticipate having an additional vacancy. So I think I'd <laughs> encourage the community, if you um, believe in inclusive housing and the value that that can add um, to the community and you're excited about um, public housing and the programs that we have, please express your interest. I believe there's an application available on the city's website um, for our commission. Um, I'll just, you know, again, reiterate that we, we start first from a place of what are our values as a commission, how do we see us fitting within this community, and what is our responsibility more broadly to this community, and then more specifically to our residents and our program participants. And we just did a little word um, scramble there of things that come up when we do our strategic planning process, and we talk about people put people people being first and about diversity and about inclusiveness and about being respectful and, again, about making people feel at home. Our mission we reviewed during our strategic planning process. We didn't make any changes, so I just popped it up here to remind you that we really you know, are after providing high-quality affordable housing, but we want to go beyond that and make sure that people feel secure and welcome within this diverse and inclusive community. 
The board worked on a vision statement as well, um, just kind of drilling down a little bit more and getting into things like um, being a key, play, a key player in some of the partnerships here in the community. Um, we were so proud to have the opportunity to work with the, the city and Jordan on the um, inclusive housing policy, and we, we want to you know continue our partnership in that regard. And we really want to be um, supportive in any way that we can so that our residents and program participants feel connected and that we are um, seen as a contributing member of this community. Um, some of our achievements, I'm certainly not going to read all the words on these pages, <laughs> but um, what I will highlight for you is that in 2017, you know, we... We, we've kind of had a big cleanup in aisle seven, you know, to say the least, for the last couple of years. So, so we've been uh, we've been working on literally reviewing every policy, every manual, every form, every everything. Um, it's been something else. Um, but we've rolled up our sleeves, and not a policy, not a manual, nothing has been left untouched. We spent the first couple of years um, since I've been there you know, really going over some of our foundational governing documents like our ACOP and our admin plan and all these bureaucratic kind of scary things. But they're quite critical to how we operate and we have left no stone unturned. So I can assure you we've uh, accomplished um, quite a bit in, in that regard, laying the foundation for success so that now we can turn forward um, and set our eyes ahead and kind of have some bigger picture, um, more strategic um, and exciting kinds of goals. Yes. Um, I really like the last bullet point on there, mm -hmm. the satisfaction customer service rating. That is such a 180 degree turnaround at a very that's short right. period of time. And so kudos to you and your staff and the board. Yeah. Like that's significant. I'm really proud about that. We don't get everything right, but I think what we do get right now is that um, I want to believe that our residents know that we're committed to having a strong partnership with them. Um, and I, I do think we've, I think we've made that change. So I think we're definitely in the right direction there. Um, you know, as we move forward, I guess I'll just highlight for 2018, we're you know, going to continue to implement that strategic plan. We've got some big physical improvements planned. We do hope to update quite a few units in our um, apartment buildings. We do have some roofs to do on some single-family homes, some siding and gutter kind of work, some of that great you know, nuts and bolts stuff. So we're going to get to um, quite a bit of that. Um, our last big policy review are our financial policies. So we're going to, we have 30 plus <laughs> that we need to look at. So we're going to spend the next year going through those um, with a fine tooth comb. Um, and we're going to, you know, implement a lot of the, the procedures and forms and updates that we need to do. One thing that I'll highlight is we did kind of go through a rebranding and I said January and I'm going to stick to it that we're going to um, have a new website up as well. It's not great, but it's better than what we have, and it's certainly um, you know, an opportunity to at least have a platform to start to do things like online rent pay and some of the customer care kind of things that we hope to achieve. And it's a first step to getting you know, more fully automated and things that we really want to accomplish. Um, so that's kind of just a summary. Um, I'll end with saying there's still a lot of work ahead, but we've got such an enthusiastic board, and we've got residents that are absolutely fantastic, and they make me so proud to be able to work with them and for them. Um, and I'm happy to entertain any questions. Through the chair, I don't have a question, but a comment. You've done just a phenomenal job there. Um, from where we were three, four years ago, it's, it's really incredible. So kudos to you and, again, the staff you've been working with and the board. Um, but it's, it really speaks highly of your care for the residents. So thank you. I did have one question mm -hmm. that's not on your um, okay. strategic plan but may affect it, is what's happening at the federal level with housing policy and funding, and what big things are you anticipating that might disrupt your path here or that's, take you down a different path? That's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, we do um, operate, we finished last fiscal year um, in the positive and better than we anticipated. Um, we've budgeted a balanced budget this year and I expect the same type of outcome. Um, we do have healthy reserves. Um, the, the one kind of biggest glitch would be um, HAP payments, which are rental subsidy payments for private landlords. That would probably be the most immediate effect of a shutdown. Um, but bigger picture, what we're hoping is that um, the federal government will continue to fund RAD conversions, which is the Rental Assistance Demonstration Project. Um, and that's where you take it. This is very bureaucratic speak, so I apologize. But it's, um, it's where you take your public housing and convert it into um, a housing choice voucher program. Um, and that frees up some opportunity to work with private investors um, to invest in your properties. Um, and it's, it's a, 
easier way to administer a program. It doesn't remove any affordable housing units. It actually adds opportunity to add um, affordable housing units. It also gives you the opportunity to do mixed use development, to do mixed income types of developments. Um, oh, and one of the most important things that I forgot to mention too, and I had it on my list. Um, when we did our policy reviews, um, a big thing that we changed is our preferences. Um, we've always had a preference for City of Ferndale residents, but we um, made it a super preference, if you will. So anyone who lives, works, or is hired to work in the City of Ferndale um, gets a preference in our public housing program. Mm -hmm. Anyone who lives, works, or is hired to work in Wayne, Oklahoma, Macomb counties has a preference in our um, housing <coughs> choice voucher program, but that's a big pool. <laughs> But for the city of Ferndale, it's our hope that as people, again, want to age in place, um, that we'll be able to use a RAD conversion to update and improve our properties and make them places that people feel great about and proud about, and that then it's a very attractive option for people who want to stay in the community. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? No. Thank you, Heather. Okay, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it very much. All right, um, Helene Zack, our county commissioner, is here to tell us about what's going on in Oakland County government. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, Want to tell you that we do have a new website uh, under oakgov.com, and if you go to the Board of Commissioners, it is much more user-friendly than it used to be. And part of the goal is we're really trying to focus in on more communication and constituent services. Um, so check us out. Um, I want to let you know that there w I'm participating in a training that's being offered by the League of Women Voters, uh, with the Women's Officials Network, and others on January 29th, next Monday, 6.30 to 8.30. And the topic is called Getting Involved, Getting Elected. And it is targeted to encourage more women to run for elective office. There is um, about six or seven of us in different or former elected positions talking about what it's like to run for office, what it's like to serve, and so forth. So again, it's at the Bloomfield Township Library, which is on Lone Pine and Telegraph, 6.30 to 8.30, Monday, January 29th. Um, there is a warning, public health warning, encouraging people to get flu shots right now. I was alarmed that as of January 6, 2018, there have been 950 flu cases in Oakland County since October 1st, 2017. That's a lot of flu. And I don't know if it's because the flu shot isn't as effective or what's going on, but we do strongly encourage people to, to get shots. You can go to the Oakland County Health Department, which is on Greenfield in Catalpa, um, they're open during the day. They also have evening hours. So I do encourage people to, do, to work on that. Um, I am in the process of working with Haven Domestic Violence Shelter on a strangulation conference um, coming. I think it's going to be in September. And I just learned that it's very alarming that there is more strangu strangulation happening with domestic assault. And it's a particularly concerning issue because there can be damage to vocal cords, death as a resulting, and you can't, uh, um, you can't see the results of strangulation with the naked eye. But Haven does have equipment to do super x-rays that will demonstrate that there have been you know, some type of assault and help prosecution. So it's a public health awareness thing that they're going to bring in experts and I'm working on it with them to secure money and so forth. Um, also, the state of the county address is going to be on Wednesday, February 7th. I don't know what new initiatives will be announced, but it is coming up and I plan to be there. Any questions? Excellent. Any questions of Elaine? No. No, Thank you. Thanks. Happy New Year. All right. 
Um, and finally, Barry from the DDA has uh, some information for us. Good evening, Mayor, Good council evening. members. Um, yeah, I just want to, first thing I just wanted to echo on what you mentioned earlier about the library. Uh, and I want to thank Jenny and her directors as well um, uh, for working with us on that. It was some time coming, but we were able to uh, come up with a, a resolution I think everybody's happy with that restores uh, funding to the DDA and ha gives us some potential future opportunities to partner on different projects. So we're excited about that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was uh, a while back, we'd started a business spotlight that you could read different articles on local businesses and things. We'd put them on our website and post them on Facebook. Uh, and they're a little intense to put some of those together. Uh, so we started thinking at the DDA, how could we do this on a, a smaller scale or quicker or something like that? Uh, and so I'm pleased to announce we're going to be launching Faces of Ferndale. Uh, and there's a couple of different reasons why we're doing this. Uh, if you remember, we talked a few months ago about a communication strategy. How do we promote Ferndale, particularly with construction coming up um, and, and getting people around? We thought one of the unique things about Ferndale is the people in it and the business owners here and the managers of these businesses. Um, and uh, Mayor, I know you're featured in one of these too <laughs> that was just recently filmed. Uh, so there's going to be brief little uh, video clips that will get released. We're going to be uh, going in February and doing that pretty intense. We're trying to do you know, three, four a week uh, throughout that month, uh, which will start the library, and it may slow down after that. Uh, and then the library of videos and pictures and quick fun facts and those types of things will continue to pop up throughout the year and be used uh, through the construction season. So that's kind of a fun thing to keep an eye on our Facebook page for coming up here pretty soon. Um, and I do want to thank uh, Cindy uh, Wilcock in our office for coordinating this, uh, and especially uh, two of our volunteers that were instrumental, uh, Tim Kay from over at Go Comedy, who's been splicing all these videos together and just doing it uh, out of the kindness of his heart for us, and they look fantastic so far, uh, and uh, Caitlin from our... Uh, business Development Committee, who has been going around and conducting some of the interviews, and uh, you know they've just been absolutely great to work with on that. So I want to give them a shout out there. Uh, and then also one last thing was uh, coming up here soon on February 15th and 16th. If you haven't already seen my emails coming out, uh, Main Street, Oakland County will be here in our neck of the woods doing a training. Uh, they don't always come to Ferndale, so it's kind of cool that they're going to be here at Affirmations those two days. Um, and it's about the Connected Downtown Tech to Trails. It's free to sign up. Uh, if you need more information on it, I can resend out an email to you. Uh, and Or you can pop in for different sessions and those types of things if you can't do two full days. Uh, but I just wanted to make you aware of that as well. Excellent. And that is all. Excellent. Anyone have any questions for Barry? Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, that concludes our presentations. Uh, the next item of business would be call to audience, and that is your opportunity if you are here in the audience and would like to address council on any issue that's not on the agenda, because you can speak to that when we get to that part of the agenda. But if there's something you want to talk about that's not on the agenda, come on up, give us your name, uh, address, and three minutes is yours to talk about whatever you'd like. Okay, good well, evening, Mayor. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Jean Burns. I'm the president of the Ferndale Memorial Association. And we in Ferndale are going to have a major event coming up, Michigan's oldest continuous Memorial Day uh, uh, observance uh, to mark the 100th anniversary, May 28th. Mm. Organizers encourage groups to participate. On Monday, May 28th, marchers in the annual Memorial Day parade will com uh, commemorate the 100th anniversary of the largest continuous continuous, I'm repeating, but anyway, uh, <laughs> observance of the holiday in the state of Michigan. Armed service members from every member of the military will be honored at the parade, which, gives, which gets underway at 10 a.m. at the corner of Livinois and West Maplehurst. The focal point of the Memorial Day observance is, as always, the reading of the honor roll. The honor roll includes the names of service members who died since Memorial Day 2017. Veterans from Ferndale and neighboring communities are recognized during the honor roll. We are encouraging members to continue to members of the community 
business as well as residents to participate as marchers in this momentous occasion, said Jean Burns, uh, <laughs> president of the Ferndale <laughs> Memorial Association. Gee, I wrote this and I'm reading it. <laughs> no, I'm not nervous. <laughs> <You're brave. laughs> the organization task with commemorating the sacrifices of veterans in the city. Participants will take to the streets with veterans, scout troops, school marching bands, dignitaries, service organizations, and businesses, as well as M Michigan Fallen, which has marked the occasion with placards honoring state residents who have died in overseas conflicts. Some groups decorate floats. Every group is urged to keep in mind the mission statement. For those who g gave their all and lest we forget. For information, you can call me. Uh, I have my number here, or my son, Stephen Lemelin. And there's also a Ferndale Memorial Association uh, dot org that has all the information about the uh, everything involved with the with the uh, parade. Now, if you have major questions. You can ask me, but it's my son that got me involved in this, so <laughs> he would be the one that would answer them. But uh, if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer or redirect to him if, if there's any. Does anyone have any questions? Be nice now. No, no. no okay. Now, now, it's a major know, event, so we want you know, everybody to participate. As always, yeah, we'll we will always, we'll all be there. I know. I appreciate that. You were there for Veterans Day and the last Memorial Days, and I... I do appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Jean. But this one's very special. Indeed. Thank you, and good job. Thanks, Jean. All right, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address council <laughs> under call to audience this evening? Hard to follow that, I know. All right, seeing none, uh, we will move on now to the consent agenda. Consent agenda items are items that council considers routine and we enact in one motion unless council pulls something from the consent agenda. Uh, so let me read that. Uh, agenda now. Item A is the approval of the minutes of the January 8, 2018 regular meeting and work session. Item B is the approval of the amendment to Chapter 3, Section 3 through 5 of the City Code of Ordinances rega regarding minor in possession, as submitted by our City Attorney. Item C is the approval of the planned maintenance agreement from Cummings, Inc. for three years, totaling $2,483.71, with the expense being charged to the General Fund Contractual Services Account. Item D is the approval of the emergency tree removal invoice from Davy Tree, Inc., totaling $10,550 to be paid from the general fund account as noted. Item E is the approval of the payment of $4,092.48 to ASCO Power Services, Inc., for the emergency repair of the pump station transfer switch to be to be paid from the water and sewer fund account, so noted. Item F is the approval of a software license and service agreement with passport parking with implementation costs and annual costs in an amount of $18,000 to be paid from the auto parking fund, the account noted on the agenda. Item G is the approval to upgrade iCompass Earth Channel Streaming Video Encoder to iCompass Video Manager HD for an annual fee of $5,600 and to purchase the iCompass Board Manager Agenda Management Program for an annual fee of $2,000 for a total amount of $7,600 annually from the account noted contractual services and authorization for the mayor to sign the contract amendment, which also waives the 5% increase for renewal services due May uh, of 2018 and May of 2019. Uh, that was submitted by our city clerk. Uh, item H is the approval to adjust the city manager's salary per the compensation plan effective July 1st, 2017. Item I is the approval of the expenditure of $36,000 for electrical upgrades and the installation of the BRICS alerting system at both fire stations to be paid from the fire department's capital outlay account. Item J is the approval of the license agreement for wireless installation on public structures between AT&T and the City of Ferndale and the non-exclusive placement of not more than four wireless installations on city structures as set forth in the attached Exhibit B and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the license agreement subject to the city's confirmation of ownership of the four structures identified. Item K, approval of the bills and payroll is presented by the city manager's office and subject, of course, to review by this council finance committee. What is council's pleasure on the consent agenda this evening? 
I move that we accept the present consent agenda as presented. I can't talk. Support. Uh, moved by Leakes May and supported by Martin. Now, any discussion on the consent agenda? Not a discussion, but I'd like to enter a comment if I could. Yes, um, the consent agenda item that deals with minors in possession is essentially moving us into compliance with state law. I just want to clarify that. We're not putting more liberal terms out there than what is allowed for by state law. And essentially the background of this, and Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, um, is you have uh, in today's state a first offense for a minor in possession is a misdemeanor, which can truly haunt an, a mistake uh, of a minor. And so for a first offense, this creates it as a civil infraction, which is still a hefty fine, still sets them up for a misdemeanor on a second infraction, but is, uh, in my mind, a more reasonable response to a first offense minor in possession. So I, I support it. I want to clarify it, though, that really it's bringing our ordinances in alignment with state law, correct? Uh, through the chair, that is correct. Yeah. Uh, the state law passed uh, amended legislation that took effect January 1st. So that uh, brings uh, the city's ordinance into compliance with state law with respect to that. Uh, the issue that you indicated regarding the decriminalization is certainly the, the, the major issue in that amendment. There uh, is still also an opportunity for a, uh, a court to have probation for that civil infraction violator. Uh, and there also is a, a change with respect to the uh, uh, admissibility and utilization of a uh, breath test uh, by police officers. But again, it's to make it consistent with state law. Which I guess raises a question for me now, and I'm certainly supportive of it, but did the state law give the communities uh, an opportunity to opt in or out, or we just want to do this to have clean, clean ordinances that are in alignment with state law? Uh, do we the, have the option not to do this? Do, do communities have the option not to do this? Well, uh, as a general rule, you can't have ordinances that are, have a stricter penalty than state law. Right. The, the issue would be, uh, in, a, in the case of a violation, whether an officer would have to write it under state law rather under local ordinance. Gotcha. And so from an efficiency standpoint, it makes, it's, makes, makes it much more efficient for the police department to have the ordinance consistent because they can then write it under local ordinance rather than submitting it to state the county then, prosecutor. And then that begs the question, is there a revenue implication? Do you get additional revenue for, for prosecuting well, under a local ordinance versus a state? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'll be honest with you, reason. in, my, in my mind it prioritizes treatment over punitive yep. opportunities. Yep. You yep. know, if a kid needs intervention and treatment, yep. this creates that opportunity without it just being a punitive stick. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Agreed. I agree. Other comments on the con any item on the consent agenda? All right, uh, we have a motion and a support. Marnie, would you call the roll on the consent agenda, please? Council members Martin? Yes. Paulica? Yes. Piata? Yes. Leakes May? Yes. And Mayor Fulcher? Yes, thank you. The consent agenda is adopted. Uh, moving on now to the regular agenda, and we just have one item this evening, and that is the consideration of the Weiss Distillery Company small winemaker license at 2441 Goodrich. And jo Jordan, you're going to introduce that, and in, did I pronounce that right? I believe it's Weiss, Mayor, Weiss, uh, but 90% yes. uh, of the information was correct, so we'll go with that. <laughs> so good evening, Council. Um, as the Mayor said, uh, so uh, now I almost forgot what it's called. Um, Weiss Distillery Co. is, in fact, looking for um, Council resolution in, in favor of uh, their small winemaker license to be located at 2441 Goodrich, which is uh, near the corner there of Goodrich and East Drayton. Uh, essentially what you're looking at here uh, is similar to a request that was, I believe, on the last council uh, from a separate, uh, I think that was, uh, we had Brooks. Uh, so essentially this is something that does not, it's not required to have local approval, uh, but we bring them before council, uh, just a matter of engagement and transparency. Uh, this is essentially the, the operation here for a small winemaker. Uh, you're looking at uh, about the impact of a mini Valentine distilling here over in the uh, industrial district. All right, questions first. Could you clarify what they do today? Uh, what they do today, they're actually brand new. Uh, this is a gentleman who uh, partnered with somebody, if I recall, out of New York. Uh, they're looking to get into this business, uh, and they identified this, uh, the space in our town, and they, this is sort of their first venture into this, into this business. Is this just a distillery, or is there a tasting room associated? There would be a tasting it? room, yes. I would move that City Council recommend to the Michigan Liquor Control 
Commission approved the request for Weiss Distillery Company for a new small winemaker's license to be located at 2441 Goodrich, Ferndale, Michigan, Oakland County, Michigan. Is there support? There's support. Support. Moved by Martin, supported by Leach May. Now, any questions, comments, concerns on this item? It would certainly seem to be consistent with the kinds of businesses that we have been attracting and um, seem to be clustering here, for lack of a better word, and I think that's a good thing. Um, yeah. We sort of created an industry here that this se seems consistent with. Would you agree with that? Yes, in, in yeah. Particular food food processors, well? distillers, uh, spirits, beer. We, we have a lot of makers in Ferndale, as a lot, as a lot of folks know, uh, and these folks, uh, I feel, sort of fit right into that, that sort of industrial district, uh, focusing on the distilling and this sort of the, the ancillary tap room. My question I have is, yeah. um, are there any similar businesses around there? Is, is this becoming, um, are a lot of these buildings being converted to distilleries? Um, not to distilleries. It's a, I would say it's a similar format. So, for example, you have Farm Field Table not far from here. Uh, Dan and Melanie uh, got to see a brief snippet of the outside of this building on the, the tour of the, the uh, M1 district that we had uh, just this past weekend. Um, you're seeing a lot of sort of production with, with complementary retail, if you will. Uh, so the, the main focus here is on the distilling product. They'll just have the tap room sort of a side effect. And that's a similar format that you're seeing in the industrial district in, in sort of that Woodward Heights, Bermuda area, Hilton. Other questions? All right. Hearing none, uh, Marna, would you call the roll, please? Council members, Palika. Yes. Kiana? Yes. Beats May? Yes. Martin? Yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. That item is adopted. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, so that concludes our regular agenda. We'll move on now to call to council. I see our police chief in the room. Chief, anything for the good of the community this evening? All right. Right in front of you is Lorena. Anything from the recreation department this evening? All right. Uh, Kara, how about anything from communications? All right. Fire Chief Sullivan, anything for the fire department for the good of the community this evening? Uh, Your Honor, Counsel, it's with a heavy heart I announce that um, Dabney Jack Holland, many year career firefighter engineer of the city of Ferndale, passed away this weekend. Mm -hmm. He served the city well. He was a great guy. He's one of the engineers I broke under. So I just wanted to let everybody know. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry to hear that. Yep. Appreciate it. Cheryl, anything from finance? You don't think I was going to skip you, did you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Jordan, anything else from economic development? Nothing else. Lloyd, welcome back. We missed your last meeting, sir. I hope you're feeling better. Well, I, I would say I was under the weather, but DPW is always on top of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I just wanted to mention to the public that uh, with these fluctuations in temperatures, we will be seeing a lot of potholes, yep. and so DPW will be responding as necessary. Also, if you see any suspicious water flowing, uh, that would indicate as the earth moves from the freeze and the thaw that there may be a water main break. So please feel free to report that to DPW at 248-546-2519. Thank you. That's through the chair. Yep. May yeah. I ask, uh, Lloyd, uh, will you all still be picking up uh, the Christmas trees? Because late yes. people like me, we just oh. put them out. <laughs> and I'm seeing a couple of got that question from someone. Yeah. It's, it's important to note. Uh, that yeah. they will not pick up the Christmas tree if it still has ornaments, a stand. Um, <laughs> yeah. and we have, things go through the chipper, okay. so that well, it, it is fair. contracted through Sacra. So, um, you know, the, the contractor is going out there. It is a newer contractor. It's only been on, on uh, in the city a, a few months, and so they're still getting used to the routes and, and that sort of thing. But uh, yes, we will. That might explain it. I've had a couple people say. Gee, my tree's been out there a while. So yes, uh, we're aware of that, and we have okay. contacted Sakura and asked them to follow up with their contractor. <laughs> All right. Okay. Appreciate it. Any other questions of Lloyd while we got him? No questions for Councilwoman <laughs> Leaks May. <but> <laughs> 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 um, Joe, anything from the Assistant City Manager's office this evening? All right. Uh, Marty, have anything for the Clerk's office? Nothing tonight. Wow. All right. April. And nothing. Uh, Dan Chris. Uh, very briefly, uh, Your Honor, there were a couple of uh, items that were uh, questions after the council uh, committee 
uh, appointment uh, meeting specifically with respect to the DDA and whether uh, you as a uh, member of the DDA needed oh. to have a uh, DDA alternate. And, yeah. and there was a time several years ago, I believe uh, when Your Honor was having difficulty making the meetings where council had appointed an alternate. But that really is, is not a necessary appointment uh, by virtue of the, the city charter, uh, the mayor pro tem uh, would uh, serve if you were unavailable or absent. Uh, so unless there's a circumstance where, where you think there's a need to have a, a resolution, that, that, that type of alternate appointment is not necessary. There was also an inquiry with, with respect to the school liaison yeah, uh, committee, right. and that goes back uh, several superintendents ago. It was an informal uh, uh, committee, which uh, we've been advised that the school district is no longer utilizing that committee, so that, that type of appointment Again, it was it was really the the school's committee, and it's not uh, in service so or action sort of any longer. Remove that. One. That's correct. And then, and then the, the third, the one, final right? is yeah. a highway committee, and there is not any type of requirement <laughs> under the, the charter or code of ordinances. Doing some research, it, and I'm not complete, but I, I believe that goes back to the old state highway hmm. uh, act in a state highway committee, which that that legislation has been repealed. So I don't believe there's a need to appoint that either, Your Honor. So we can reduce layers of government. Right. <laughs> so if we we remove that. those committees. We could just remove those future. committees from our Appointment. annual appointee yes. or biannual appointees. All right. All right. Sounds good to me. Nothing further. Thank you, Dan. Thank I appreciate you. it. Uh, Councilman Martin. Two things. I just want to thank the Economic Development Department. Councilwoman Piana and I had the opportunity to do a really helpful and instructive tour of the industrial sector this past Saturday. I went through a ton of businesses that some I knew about, some I didn't know were here, uh, and, and have been here less than a year. And it really highlighted for me uh, the creative energy that's going on in that space and that energy and some of the, the cool interrelated business activities that you wouldn't necessarily associate with each other. And so I, I'm just really thankful for the opportunity. Um, uh, and the three-hour walking tour, uh, <laughs> but it was but it was really instructive and really helpful, and I, it was just terrific. So thank you, thank you very much. And, and next year lunch wouldn't kill you, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> secondly, um, <laughs> secondly, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the uh, um, this weekend starts the Ferndale Blues and Music Festival. I talked about this last time. It, benef it goes on for a whole week. It benefits Ferndale Youth Assistance. Um, and I'd encourage you to check out the website and uh, partake in some really terrific music and an absolutely fabulous cause. Uh, feed the pig, as they say, during this festival. So thank you. That's it. Excellent. Before I call on Councilwoman Lee May, Dan, you're so new, I skipped you and forgot to call on you. But is there anything from the HR department from our new director? <laughs> you survived your first two weeks. All right, awesome. I apologize, I won't do that again. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remind you next. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Lee Fay. So this is just really a, a comment uh, regarding an act of kindness. So last Thursday, January 18th, um, my mom came to town and um, with my, uh, my, my, net, my uncle and my two uncles and a friend, they all went to lunch at, or breakfast at Red Olive. And this is just, you know, something, an act of kindness that kind of happened to them. They were just kind of having their, their breakfast, and an actual Oak Park police officer just decided to pick somebody out of the group and just paid for their breakfast. So I just wanted, you know, he wanted to remain nice. anonymous. Um, so they don't know who did it, so I just wanted to, you know, thank that, thank that officer. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and, and not to, you know, just not to discredit our officers here, they do kind <laughs> things all the time. So, <laughs> and our, our, our and the administrative staff and uh, our police and fire, so. Yeah. But just, you know, spread a little kindness. You never know how far it will go. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Paulica. Uh, one thing, uh, just before the new year, our quiet zones went into effect. Yeah. And uh, it, it's funny because it didn't dawn on me today till I actually heard a train that I haven't heard a train for the last three weeks. Um, so, but with that, 
early on, the first within the first week, I received a number of emails and Facebook uh, posts uh, commenting about how wonderful uh, the new quiet zones are. A uh, number of people who work nights sleep during the day, and, and several of them have responded yeah. saying that they love the fact that they don't hear the train. The train doesn't wake them up during the day. So I uh, just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention yep. uh, because, honestly, I forgot about them until <laughs> till I heard the train this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> it is a welcome change, isn't it? Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Piana. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm all thing policy through MML. But I wanted to let you know that the House Elections Committee has brought something back that is not very popular with cities. Um, House Bill 4814 is, uh, is suggesting limits on local governments to be only being able to offer any type of millage question on the November general election date. So this impacts all school districts, uh, libraries, um, any city that has a um, specific public safety millage. Um, would all have to go on the November ballot. And the Michigan Municipal League is fighting that, but we're asking all um, council people to contact our representatives um, to uh, weigh against this bill because we need flexibility and be able to keep some of our, uh, our public institutions running and providing adequate services. And so this bill is uh, really um, un- friendly to communities um, across the state of Michigan. And so um, public service notice there, I'll be watching that. <laughs> um, and then I had a question, I guess I should have brought it up with um, when Lloyd was at the dais, dais, but I am interested in hearing um, an update about our tree ordinance um, and making sure that that project moves over the finish line. Um, and I was wondering if you could give us an update where that is and Will we have a new timeline for getting this project done? Sure, I talked to Erin about that this morning and she's gonna work on a new timeline for it, or an updated timeline. Okay. I don't have any information today. Okay, thank you. Is that it? Yep, Excellent. Thanks. Um, the only thing that came to mind, and I know Barry didn't bring it up um, uh, in his presentation, but on Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Uh, here in council chambers, the GDA is having their annual uh, strategic planning session. So if you're interested and, and curious about what the strategy of the DDA is or you have opinions or comments that you want to share, uh, right here Thursday evening at 6 p.m., uh, you, you have an opportunity to do that. And with that, I have no further items, and so our meeting is adjourned. Total Info, Dailies.